Welcome to the Always Better Than Yesterday podcast. I am your host, Ryan Hartley. This podcast is for heart-centered leaders just like you. I hope our time spent together helps you leave a heart print where those around you are left better than yesterday. These interview sessions are sponsored by our great friends at Elevate Online Marketing. On episode 166, I am joined by children's TV presenter Andy Day. Andy has been a CBBS presenter since 2007 and fronted much loved programs such as Andy's Adventure Series, which my kids absolutely loved watching growing up. It's fair to say Team Hartley have watched a lot of Andy in action doing what he loves. He is the front man for the family pop rock band Andy and the Odd Sox, and he's a patron of the Anti-Bullying Alliance. Be sure to stay to the very end because I'm joined by Corey and Brooke, my own children, as they put their curious questions to Andy. This has been one of the real joys of being able to host a podcast and share these experiences with them too. I hope you really enjoy the uh, the little conversation that they have with Andy at the end. Andy and the band have a new album for release on the 1st of April and they will be going on tour. Be sure to take your family to see them live. Here we go, episode 166 with Andy Day. Andy, welcome to the Always Best Than Yesterday podcast. How are you? Thanks for having me, mate. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Oh, mate, we have seen so many of your episodes. I've seen your face and I just love... Sorry about that. <laughs> Do you know what? It's actually a pleasure. It's a guilty pleasure. I love, I love seeing people in the world just bringing light, bringing light, love and energy. Is it fair to say that you love what you do? Oh, yeah, no, I absolutely love what I do. I, I, I was very thankful to be able to do the thing that I wanted to do. I think from the age of 20, that's when I decided I wanted to get into kids TV, specifically kids TV as well. Mm. And it's a real joy to be in that industry as well. Mm. Mm. I, um, I asked my community um, if they had any questions for you. And, and one of my good friends, Emily, she said something about how does he kind of manage his energy? You know, if you've been in kids TV, what that must be nearly 20 years and had like you always bring such great energy. I can't imagine. Maybe you are. Maybe you're always on. Maybe you've always got energy. But like, is that something you have to consciously try and do to manage that energy? It's it's so funny when people ask me that, because um, I only have to be that energetic. Yeah. For small periods of time. Um, I mean, I am in I'm a sort of. Heart, uh, glass half full yeah. kind of guy and you know and I, I like to see the joy in things mm. and uh, you know I like to smile I like to be laughing with friends and, mm-hmm. and in doing the things that I enjoy so as, as in, in terms of that much um, bringing energy to it yeah definitely um, but yeah no I, I definitely have my <laughs> days where I'm not so energetic you can tell Emily that <laughs> yeah I shall and are there things that you have to do? Are there things that, uh, like, do you have like a, like a before going on screen kind of ritual? Is there anything you do to get yourself in the game? Um, I try and bring the people around me into my world a little bit, and mm. um, whether that's sort of like spouting my sort of quite unusual humour or just talking rubbish. Um, and then everyone sort of engaged in it and then it brings me up a bit so I sort of use the people around me and I, I'm really lucky to have um, to a really good team of people when when we work like whether it's Andy and the band we've got the mm. band to sort of um, play off and the crew yeah uh, but if it's Andy's adventures which is pr- predominantly green screen Mm. um that luckily i've got such a lovely team that i've worked with them for many years and so they know my quirks and i just uh <laughs> you know my a stream of consciousness just sort of happens to try and bring me up oh, i'm tired that's so, so i bring everyone to singing i quite i sing quite a lot yeah um and just random stupid songs as well so um anything to survive in that in that uh anything to bring the energy up uh just to get us to perform but also uh, and, and, and this is something that really helps as well, is that before I do it, I consciously remind myself mm. that if I don't give the energy, the, the, the viewer being the, the kid and parents as well, mm-hmm. they're not going to get the best of that scenario. And so you sort of tell yourself, oh, I've got a responsibility. 
and uh, and that g's me up as well mm. I have to remind myself of things like that yeah I, I i could just picture like in front of a green screen and there's a you know maybe it's an allosaurus egg scene that you <laughs> you know it's like trying to bring that to life it's uh it takes that's amazing and and, and i guess I guess to do that with such levels of expression, because you know, my my daughter, she's um she's creative, she's courageous, she's very expressive. Um and the world reacts to that. The mm-hmm. world the world reacts and responds and and not always in ways that are encouraging for a young person. I guess are there are there points where they're you know you've almost felt discouraged from bringing that quirkiness to the world? I think you've got to find your voice with things. When I first started in children's TV, I was probably a little bit um, insecure about it all because mm-hmm. my first real big children's TV gig was the thing I always wanted to do. So it was like my big moment, if you like. And, yep. and it was in a very safe environment because everyone around me was very lovely. Um, but you have to find your voice. You sort of, I think I started... Um, I started performing and presenting how I thought people would mm. want me to perform and present as a as a sort yeah. of overall thing, you know. And then as time goes by and you get more comfortable, more of your own quirks sort of come out, and then you sort of feel a bit more comfortable in that. Mm. And uh, and I sort of found my voice probably probably took about a year actually. Uh, when I started in Sydney, because I've been doing it 15 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so CBB's presentation was when I started in the CBB's house. That's when it, um, I sort of found my voice and I felt comfortable with it. And, and that's really important to find the thing that you bring to the table because we're all different. Mm. And we all have something different to bring. And it's finding that and sort of having the confidence in doing it. Some people won't like it. <laughs> uh, and I've definitely had comments in the past where I know that some people don't like it because I'm quite expressive as well, as you said, mm. um, and a bit rubbery uh, around the face. Um, and, and some people get annoyed by that. Not, not <laughs> so on. much, frankly, yeah. not so much in the children's world because, yeah, yeah. you know, as a parent, you sit down with your kids and because I'd be really thankful to be part of programs that are really well made and yeah. people are very passionate about it because the teams that I work with, you know, they're the ones that really, they're massive. Uh, they don't get the credit that they are due, mm. really. Uh, whereas I front it all, you know, mm. so people just see me and then they see the program. Whereas the program is built up with uh, an incredible team. Yeah, of course. Has that answered your question? I feel like yeah, I feel like 100%. Well. Yeah, I like, I like that question. I like that answer. And, um, you know, I, I guess being in the public eye as well, particularly with children, you're going to get recognised wherever you go. And yeah. Like, just trying to think about that from a human being perspective, because it's so easy to go, oh, that's just Andy from the TV. And realizing that maybe you're out with your family, maybe you're out, you know, with your, your little one. And um, and just realizing that you've got to manage state, brand, whatever that might be. And <laughs> how's, how's that for you? How do, do you, you know what? Do you know what, right? It, it, again, it's reminding yourself for me, at one, I've been doing it for a long, long time. Yeah. And it's always lovely. It's never negative i mean there mm. might have been a couple of things in the past that sort of like i don't know you get some drunk dad if you're on a night out with your friends or something like that comes, ah! and then it's a bit like oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. um but that's yeah. that's not happened many times but mainly when you meet kids or parents and stuff like that instantly i think mm. for these kids you know it's a massive moment um, because not to blow my own trumpet, I'm talking yeah. about a massive moment to see someone off TV that they uh, that they watch quite a lot, mm. and uh, and the parents, it's it's a big responsibility for what you're like in front of the parents as well. Mm. But because they're always nice and people mainly are very respectable. If I'm out with my, I've got two kids. If I'm out with my kids and my my, my wife, then generally people don't. You know, you, I know when people have recognised me or if they've got kids and, you know, but people are very uh, respectable. Yeah. And, uh, and if they do come over, I never, I never mind. It's never, mm. it's never, it's never a big enough issue. Um, but of course, you know, I'm not a big celebrity, you know, so I think people either really know me or they really don't, mm. um, which is very interesting. 
And there is an element, I suppose, of when you're on TV um, or when you have been watched for whatever you do, you know, that you have a, 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 an already sort of perceived idea of you. And it's mm. different for everyone because yeah. they've seen you in different lights at different times. So I do often think, oh, I wonder, you know, how do I come across to this person? How is it? And that's really interesting. It's their own individual account of it. Uh, for me, I just, I, I react in the same way. If someone comes over and says hello, I'm more than happy to say hello back and have a picture with the little one or with them. Mm. And it's all good. And also, you know, it's quite nice to talk to people. It's, I, I'd rather find out about them and, you know, see what they do. And uh, yeah. Hey, my friends, I hope you're enjoying the interview so far. I just wanted to take a quick moment to let you know that this summer, the Always Better Than Yesterday community turns five. On Saturday, the 25th of June, 2022, we're going to be hosting an event down here in Trowbridge in the southwest of England, where we're going to bring together like-hearted human beings with a little bit of inspiration, a whole lot of connection, and we're going to be celebrating this journey that we've all been on over the last five years. We have three guest speakers lined up. We'll be joined by Matt Hill, Esther McCann and Tommy Gentleman. We'll have welcome drinks provided by our sponsor, Elevate Online Marketing, and we'll have food provided by Valicious. And after we've had some speakers, we've had some food and some welcome drinks, we will then start the party. We will have some music. We are going to have a live band performing live for us for the very, very first time. You can get your tickets now. Tickets are on sale. They are £20 per person. They will include your welcome drink and your evening meal. So go grab your tickets now in the show notes and let's get back to the interview. I love that. And uh, I just find it fascinating, like, you know, because there's cameras everywhere. There's social media everywhere, like trying to maintain a, an image, like public image. It's hard enough for, for most people anyway, let alone when you're, yeah. in, the, you're in this spotlight with uh, a children's TV. So um yeah, hats off to you for, for for managing that over the years, my friend. How, how do you manage social media? Are you quite good on it, or like well, plugging your podcasts and stuff like that? Are you? Yeah, I, I, do you know what? I I try to be a um, try to be a platform whenever someone spends any time in in my company that it helps in some way. That it's just either insightful, it's humorous, or or it connects them with someone or something that that's useful so i try and be of use i try and be of service um and i try and document the journey along the way i think i've realized that some of these podcasts some of this social media stuff when you start to think in the world of legacy which means that it's, there's a digital record there are people that i may never meet that might get to know their great 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 granddad yeah right all oh, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Yeah. So I, I think about it a little bit like that. Maybe that's too deep, but that's sometimes how I think about it. Like, here is an opportunity to get to know Ryan Hartley and the things that he really likes, things he really cares about. And uh, and I try and use it in, in that way. You should do a video. So this is to my great, 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 great grandson. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. I always sound like a busted song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's... um. You know, for you with with your career and your opportunities, you you got into it, you know, young age. You've since become a parent. Has that changed your perspective on on the work that you do? Has it changed your approach in any way? No, it's just enhanced it, I suppose, and and, and clarified it more than anything. Because obviously, I'd seen lots of uh, parents and how they were with their kids and how they mm. adore. You know, if you're pleased, if someone is pleasing your kids, then you're happy and you love them. <laughs> you know. So, um, so watching Rubes, uh, my little girl, watch the programs that she watches. Sometimes she watches uh, me. Sometimes she watch Paw Patrol, whatever. And yeah. you know, it's uh, it's a joy to see because they get so much out of it. And uh, and and when they were, she, like she met Waffle once, and she was obsessed mm -hmm. with Waffle, Waffle the Wonder Dog. And um, you know, just to see her eyes sort of light up, I, I, I completely get it. I get it. Yeah, uh, I always did get it, but I get it even more as a parent. Yeah. When did it drop that dad's not actually in the telly? <laughs> um, do you know, I don't think there was ever a moment. She just, I pro she probably thought that everyone's dad was on the TV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you, you know, there was never really a moment. She just took it. Ruse is very much like that. She's very trusting. She takes it at face value. She's like, oh, that's daddy. Um, 
but also she treats daddy's characters like the characters like she'll talk to her best mate next door and she'll go andy did this today you know <laughs> uh, but she still knows it's daddy yeah yeah um, yeah she'll still refer to it as andy still... i love that is there a favorite um adventure pro project that you've been on that uh, you enjoyed most uh from the adventure brand yeah um what did i like doing i quite liked all the underwater stuff so i had mm. to um I had to film in a tank, uh, not a tank, a swimming pool, a Lido in Port's Head. Yeah. Uh, so all the um, Andy's adventures that you see me underwater with, mm-hmm. apart from the earlier ones. In fact, the earlier ones, because of the budget, what they actually did was put a silk shirt on me and, <laughs> uh, and they slowed down, um, slowed down the frames per second. And I just had to go really fast like this. And slow <laughs> down. When you see that on Andy's Wild Adventures, it's me going, I'm gonna go check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you always is. But um, but the underwater stuff, I had to do all the underwater training, and I don't, I've done my open water anyway. But I had to do all the underwater training and uh, uh, just to refresh it, and and that was good fun. I'd be yeah. under there like uh, there's nothing more calming than being underwater as well. So I was under there for like an hour and a half at a time, doing all the lines, and there, were, you know, there's a big speaker there. The director was speaking to me, mm. so I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that element. And uh, I mean, I love it in general, mainly because of the people you work with. I mean, after a while, working on a green screen can get you a bit like, because mm. <laughs> uh, you don't see anything. You've got to imagine everything. Yeah. Uh, which is great, but um, much prefer being with people and reacting to people. So all the scenes where I'm with Jen or Mr. Hammond or mm. Mrs. Pickles or Hattie, and that, I love them because you're reacting off people. Mm. I love the way that you speak with a sense of, you know, responsibility for your craft, for your character and for the people that kind of interact with with that. And it, it all points to me of having some bigger purpose than just doing what you love. And have you, do you consider yourself as someone that lives and leads with purpose? Is that something you, you've you been very conscious about through your career? More, more and more so, more so as, I, as I've got older, about how yeah. important that is. Um, you know, when you sort of begin in these things, you, uh, I suppose that, um, you know, it's more about, it's a bit more egoic, a bit more mm-hmm. about the, you know, I, you know, I can work on TV and stuff mm-hmm. like that when you first start out. But then you realise the sort of responsibility you have and the, and the impact you can make on uh, your audience's uh, uh, lives. You know, kids, you know, being a part of brands like, the dinosaur brand or adventures brand you know kids are inspired to go and be paleontologists or you know mm. you make a difference in their life and that's really important so it's important to me that i, I take responsibility i take it seriously yeah uh, to a certain degree and um yeah I, I as i've got older i think i used to think i think i used to think when i was younger ah uh, you know and in my head, this was freeing, but nothing, nothing, there's no point to anything. So you might as well just go for everything. Mm-hmm. As I've got older, I feel like, no, there's a point to everything. You should treat it like that. And so everything matters as opposed mm-hmm. to, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, everything mm-hmm. matters. And, um, you know, not quite there yet, but I still, I try and apply that to, I try and remember to apply that to to most things that I I do now. Mm. Um, And that that gives you the freedom to do the acting, to do the band stuff. It's, I guess it's all an expression of that, that bigger purpose and meaning. Yeah. Well, the band stuff, I mean, I've always wanted to have a band. I love singing (laughs) and we've got a fantastic band. I mean, they're really talented guys. And, and also, you know, kids TV was massive for me when I was younger. I was, mm. you know, loved it. I absolutely loved it. Like, mm. like all of us do, you know. And, and as you get older, what I love about it is that you can have a conversation and connect with someone mm. um, uh, simply by talking about the programmes you used to watch. And there's a real connection. It doesn't matter what happens. You're like, oh, you used to watch Green yeah. Claws. Yeah, yeah Green yeah. Claws. Remember the Thundercats? Oh, I love Thundercats. <laughs> um, like a mice from Mars. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so all those programs you can have good connections with people with mm. so um i wanted we wanted the sort of team behind andy and, and the odd socks um you know when we thought up these ideas it started with an album 
and he mm-hmm. knew socks. And uh, another thing I enjoy doing is sort of writing music as well. But the boys that write most of the songs uh, are just, in my eyes, they're just genius. And we're, we're you know, they're uh, very, very close friends now. And we work together really well and really, really enjoy sort of writing and, uh, and stuff. Anyway, um, so for Andy and the Odd Socks, we wanted to make uh, a program that sort of encapsulated the sort of Mighty Boosh meets Flight of the Concord meets mm-hmm. Scooby Doo meets um, lots of things when we were kids, like Round the Twist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how old you are, Ryan, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. watched my fair share of that, yeah, yeah, uh, and um, and and bring it all into a program like that. And, and I think I'm, I'm really proud that we sort of brought Andy and the band into that realm it's got mm-hmm. that fun quirky element to it and it inspires kids to well, to be themselves and also to pick up an instrument and yeah. and, and play and it's yeah so mm-hmm. it's sort of gone from adventure still happens and i'm really proud of that brand i love it and i wouldn't ever you know if as long as the work still comes in as long as it's still <laughs> filming it's brilliant but andy and the odd socks and andy and the band are um are definitely the thing that we're sort of focusing on more um mm. yeah i'm not sure you even asked me that but i still i ended up oh, there. I, no I, you take it where you want to my friend and and i, I i've been listening to some of the uh, the odd socks the, you know your latest album and you know i love it it's great isn't it because it's 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 light-hearted it's fun and yet it's got a, a message that i hope that you know connects with young people that that gets into the heart and into their minds and you know you talk about respect and um laughing in the face of fear and, and and never giving up these are these are kind of like character building concepts right absolutely yeah and i think um you know when we wrote these songs that's what we had in mind as well mm. but try to make it sort of fun and mm. um and engaging you know it's not like, oh, it's got to be serious. This is the message. It's <laughs> to make it a fun, a good message that parents can appreciate as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, what Andy and the Odd Socks is, is a family band, something yeah. for the kids to watch with their parents. We're, we're quite lucky that a lot of the sort of fans that come and see us, um, they're like, they are fam- the whole family will dress up in alien costumes or, yeah, yeah. you know, as battle robot rappers and uh you know it's great it's so good to see it's like a real privilege to be a part of it yeah i love that and uh you are working closely with a charity i understand is it anti-bullying yeah anti-bullying yeah which came about because of the whole ethos of andy and the odd socks so we we got um we got involved with with them um and we started odd socks day Mm. uh, and that that's been going for five years now and we sort of write a, a new song every year and try and engage with as many schools to get involved in anti-bullying week. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it, it's amazing the sort of numbers of, of people getting involved because it's a simple concept and, um, and it should be talked about in schools and made aware to kids about what bullying looks like and how you can sort of be a part of, you know, I mean, these are these are these are young ones. You know, this, it looks very much different. The sort of bullying to, to when you get to sort of secondary school, but the hope is like you know they can find that confidence within themselves, or or you yeah. know speak up, or you know. And so when they actually get to a time that if they let's hope they they don't, but if, if they get bullied or whatever in in secondary school, then it can it can help them in some way. Yeah, I love that. With um with your particular craft, obviously it's a it's a career that you you've um that you found yourself in and, and you you've you've gone on to do great things. There are many, many people um or many young people out there at the moment that are realizing that they've got these gifts, they've got these skills, they've got these talents. And um there's some people, really talented kids out there. <laughs> so really there really is. And yeah. and actually the parents of those kids are listening to this right now and you know, what are some of the do's and don'ts that you might, rec- you know, recommend for parents? Because, you know, so many, you know, particularly around the, the sport world, like parents trying to live vicariously through their children, like it can just suck all the fun out and it can in, embrace fear and performance kind of mentality. What are some of the kind of high level do's and don'ts would you suggest for, for parents nurturing the skills of their kids? Don't pressure them into something that they don't want to be pressured into. Mm. But at the same time, 
you know, you want you want your kids to, if they're going to do it, to do it mm. as good as they can do it. Yeah. But don't make them do it because you're living vicariously through you know, <laughs> through them. Um, I would say that. I mean, that's not speaking from experience. That was just yeah. uh, for me. That would be a, a no no. Give mm. the space to to the kids um, to see them sort of blossom within whatever mm. what they want to do. And I suppose introduce, I want with my little girls, I I wanted to introduce them to as much stuff as possible. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they can think, well, I don't like that one. But at the same time, like I was very much, uh, I don't know, jack of all trades, master of none. You know I mean? My my concentration, uh, you know, I'd go from one thing to the other, to the other, to the other. You know, I quite quite like that. But as I've got older, I sort of thought, I wish I'd just focus more on just that one thing. Mm. Uh, it's a real skill i think the biggest skill if if i if someone come down and said andy (laughs) i'm going to give you two important skills what do you want i'd be like patience and the art of listening i think they're the two biggest things that you can have that would excel um anything that you do patience Mm. and listening because whenever you meet someone who's patient and who listens Mm. you know you just you listen to them you know, you think, oh, well, you know, you learn from them. Um, so I think, be, uh, bring it back to your question with the kids, I suppose it's being paid up. I like to hope, I hope I can be as patient as possible with my little ones as to what they want to do and, and, and listen as well. And listen behind the lines as well, you know, behind the sort of, oh, yeah, no, I'm enjoying this. Are you really, you know what I mean? Yeah. sort of uh reading uh, it behind i don't know there's no no i like that I, I, my my daughter brooke she's um she's six and she was in a little stagecoach locally and she right. was cast as the role of ursula and little mermaid and obviously she was hoping to to be ariel she said oh no and it's like right brooke if you're gonna do this you give it your best give it your absolute best enjoy the role embrace like ursula and all that she's represents and then just to see her on the stage like oh no she was so <laughs> expressive i she honestly just brought tears to my eyes watching oh her, just... man i bet that's great i can't wait to my little yeah like yeah I, i'm definitely that crying dad in like <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely that guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah 100 percent. oh god i'd be the same I'd be in tears watching them because it's, it's amazing. What an amazing thing, you know, mm. to see your little ones up on stage or you doing anything that they're proud of, you know. 100%. That's what it's all about. And you you said you got into this career at the age of 20. And I, I remember, you know, being at university, 18, 19, 20, like even the idea of taking a gap year feels like you're going to get left behind for a year. So did you feel like getting into that at 20 was late? Did you feel late at that time? It's weird, actually. I made the decision at 20 that I wanted to make this as a career, but I actually, when I left college, I worked at the Millennium Dome, um, which is now the O2 Arena, and um, I worked as a character host and did like loads of street theatre and uh, entertained the crowds and stuff like that and learned a bit of craft there. Uh, and that's a big part of why I wanted to get into it actually. But then I went away and went traveling and come back and decided that's what I wanted to do. Sorry, mate, what was the question? <laughs> well, it just did, did it feel late. I think everything feels like a bit of a pressure cooker when you're younger. And sometimes you look back and what is of actually a very small amount of time is, or what feels like a, a significant yeah. amount of time is actually a very small moment in time, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what, right? I, I didn't feel like it was late. I, when I was younger, I sort of really just, I, I, I was probably naive to a lot of things. I just went in a direction and, and had full confidence that no matter what happened, I'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, yeah. I had that, that it was the one thing. I wasn't massively, massively confident in certain things that I did, but I, I knew whatever I ended up doing, I'd be all right. Um, mm. And I think that sort of belief sort of didn't put too much pressure on things. Mm. You know, yeah, so I, was, I was lucky in that respect. Yeah, I want to be super conscious and respectful of your time. We'd just love to know what the phrase always better than yesterday means to you. I suppose um, taking each day, learning from the last and trying to make it better. Simple, right? 
maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> it, not it is that it, you know it, and, and that is it. it's that simple isn't it it's being able to take something practical learn it implement it and off we go and and, yeah. and still we shot super respectful for your time thank you so much for joining i've got two little guests waiting in the wings that would love to ask their curious questions if you don't mind hanging around of course. and i'd just be honored if you just leave us with a final thought from your good self I would say something that someone said to me once and it always stayed with me. And it's, if you don't love something, find the love in what you do. Hmm. And what I mean by that is, um, sometimes we don't like things that we're doing. Sometimes we're in situations we don't like. If you just switch that head and go, do you know what? I'm gonna find the love in doing that. Then it just, it will switch everything around and, uh, and hopefully make a big impact. Love that. Yeah. Where can people find your, your latest projects and the good work that you're doing in the world? Okay, so um, Andy and the Band 2 is our new series. It's out on BBC iPlayer and uh, on CBBC. Uh, we've got a new album that comes out on the 18th of Feb, uh, and that you can find online. If you go on to Andy and the um, then we've got a tour that's happening in April. Um, and uh, yeah. So if anyone fancies coming to see us rock out, then uh, please do come down. I love that. I'll leave you to you, Sushi, my friend. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Rai. Cheers, mate. Andy, thank you for allowing me to bring two special guests with us. We've got Corey and Brooke here. Say hi, guys. Come closer. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Corey, you look tall. How tall are you? Pardon? How tall are you? About one metre thirty. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Pretty tall. He is tall. He is tall. We need to stop feeding you, don't we? We need to stop watering you. But it's it's not every day that we get to speak with one of the kids' heroes. And we are tell you the amount of times we've watched Andy's dinosaur adventures. And um, I couldn't possibly have this conversation without allowing them to come and ask some couple of questions. So thank you for being a good sport. Corey, would you, do you want to ask a question, mate? You got a question? Um, when did you first decide you wanted to start acting? Oh, good question. I want, I did drama when I was younger. Oh, yeah. And so I really enjoyed it then, but I didn't really take it seriously till I was about 20. Because uh, I went to Italy and I worked with lots of kids and I did lots of uh, plays at schools. It was a theatre in education, it's called. And, um, and so, yeah, so I got my love of sort of performing then and and decided to take it seriously and, and try and get into kids' TV. That's what I wanted to do. Nice. And, uh, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke is the actor in the house. Brooke, oh, is, Brooke is currently doing stage. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that nervous face fool you. She is the quite the performer. What, um, what tips might you have for our little Brooke with her kind of acting? I can tell she's going to do very well. <laughs> no matter what I say, <laughs> you've got a good face there, a good reactive face. Um, yeah, I just think go for it, enjoy it, uh, work hard, and um, and I'm sure you'll do very, very well. Do, do you do you enjoy acting and singing and dancing, Brooke? You do it all. Good stuff. Absolutely love it, don't you? Mm -hmm. It's it's really interesting as a parent understanding like how to kind of nurture their nature. It's, you know, they're very different. Corey's the sportsman, he's, he's intellectually very clever. This one's just very expressive. The performer. And, and, yeah, hundred percent. And learning how to nurture that. And Corey, Corey likes to think he's a great singer, but unfortunately he's not quite. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sing in the shower, Corey. hundred percent. He's not quite blessed with the, the pipes of Brooke. Brooke, have you got a question for Andy? Yeah, what was it? Was I think you were, wanted to ask a question about dinosaurs, didn't you? No, I don't want to. You don't want to ask that question anymore. <laughs> she wanted to know if you actually go and meet real dinosaurs. Of course, I do. There How else would I use that time machine clock that we've got? How else would I find out all the things that we need to find out and save the day um, at the museum? Because Mainly because the caretaker has mucked things up. Of there you I go. There time. you go. That's the truth. Now you've heard it from Andy himself. Any more questions before we um, before we wrap up? Come closer. Was there another? Come closer. 
did you ever mm-hmm. have another talent that you wanted to share with the world? Or has it always been acting? Oh well, um, um, I used to. I played table tennis. There we go. I couldn't <laughs> say I'm talented, but I love the game and I play it a lot. Uh, nice. it, that would be. I'd, I'd want to be a, a table tennis champion um, playing in the Olympics. If I was, if I was not doing what I'm doing. Yeah, we we know that you're in a band as well, and we we saw a little video of you playing with along with Brian May earlier as well, and yeah. you know, these guys. Do you guys candy in the band? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, good stuff. Do you like that? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Love it, don't we? Right. What do you say then? Big thank you to Andy. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Andy, thank you so Love much for being you. a great sport. Cheers. Take care. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Hey, my friends, thank you for making it to the end. I hope that our time spent together today has left you a little bit better than before you push play. I'd really appreciate if you just took a moment to leave a review to allow me to meet more people where they are and hopefully leave them a little bit better too. If you're curious to know how I, through Always Better Than Yesterday, can serve you, your team, your organisation, then head to alwaysbetterthanyesterday.com to connect. And while you're there, let me know One or two things that you're going to do as a result of listening to this conversation. I absolutely love hearing your thoughts, your reflections and the things that this spark in your own heart and mind. If you want more insights from my heart and mind, I do send out short episodes on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. And again, I hope that they serve you well. I appreciate you listening. I'm Ryan Hartley, host of the Always Better Than Yesterday podcast, a podcast for heart-centered leaders just like you. Keep leading, my friends. Always love.